Hey there, welcome back to How To Medicate and welcome to the second video of this two-part mini-series. Last week we covered the four most common curable STDs. Those are chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis and trichomonias. And today I will cover the four most common uncurable STDs. Those are herpes simplex virus, human papilloma virus, hepatitis B and HIV. We will cover their symptoms, how to recognize if you're infected, and most importantly, how to prevent getting infected. Let's get started. And first off, a little introduction. My name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewer. And of course, a little disclaimer, this video is meant purely educational. This is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. This brings us to the first STD, HIV, which stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, which can cause AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It's maybe the best known STD and has 40,000 new cases each and every year in the US alone. HIV is a sexual transmitted disease and it's transferred through blood and sexual fluids but it can also be transferred from a mother to a child through childbirth or through breast milk. HIV attacks our immune systems, especially the CD4 cells, which normally protect us from infections. Within two to four weeks after being infected, about 80% of the patients experience mild flu-like symptoms, a severe headache and a rash. This is called an acute HIV infection. This usually lasts one to two weeks but then those initial symptoms disappear and for months till years you're asymptomatic. During this time, the virus actively multiplies in your body, making your immune system weaker and weaker. This doesn't actually cause any symptoms, but you will be able to spread it to other partners. Eventually your immune system is so severely damaged, you will enter stage 3 HIV called AIDS. This is the final stage where your immune system is so severely damaged you're very susceptible for all opportunistic infections. Thereby, you will experience rapid weight loss, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, chronic fatigue, coughing, fever, and when untreated, you will surely die. However, there is hope. There is no cure yet for HIV, but it can be slowed through antiretroviral therapy. This therapy prevents the virus from replicating, stops the progression of HIV, and improves the quality of life. And the earlier you start, the better the outcome. In addition, recent studies have even indicated that by adhering this treatment, it is virtually impossible to transmit HIV to another partner, which of course is a major win. Next up, hepatitis B. Hepatitis B can be caused by the hepatitis B virus, HBV. Duh. It can be transmitted through blood or sexual fluids, for example, during sexual intercourse, but most commonly is transmitted from a mother to a child during childbirth. A man oh man is it common. About 360 million people worldwide are infected by hepatitis B. After being infected, it takes one and a half to six months before you experience any symptoms. This then is called an acute hepatitis B infection. Most of the people infected experience no symptoms at all, and those who do might experience mild-like flu symptoms, nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, a mild fever, dark urine and jaundice. And this may last for a few weeks. In 90% of all those cases, your immune system gets rid of the hepatitis B virus eventually and you're immune for hepatitis B for the rest of your life. However, in 10% of the cases, your immune system can't get rid of the hepatitis B and you will develop a chronic hepatitis B infection. This may lead to scarring and inflammation of your liver and in 25% of all cases this will cause severe scarring and even liver cirrhosis. This may take 20 years but can also increase your risk on developing liver cancer. And unfortunately liver cancer can be fatal. Again there is good news there is an available treatment. With antiviral therapy you can reduce and delay the symptoms of hepatitis B infection. But more importantly there even is a vaccine to make sure you won't ever get hepatitis B infection at all. More on that coming up at the end of the video. Next on the list is herpes simplex virus, HSV. 
and there are two types of the virus, type 1 and type 2, very original. Now this virus causes painful blisters and sores. Type 1 causes them around your nose, mouth and lips and type 2 causes those blisters around your genitals, which is my least favorite version of the virus. The virus is transmitted by virus-filled fluid in these blisters, so by skin-to-skin -skin contact during, for example, kissing or sexual intercourse. The first infection usually is the worst. You get many painful blisters and sores, they can itch very badly, you will develop flu and it can even spread to other parts of your body. Your eye, your brain, your gastrointestinal tract and this can be dangerous. The symptoms usually start one to two weeks after being infected and last upwards of two weeks. Now after this initial infection, the virus starts to hide from your immune system and hides in the body of your nerve system cells, your neurons. From there the virus reactivates and causes outbreaks. So every time you're feeling ill, you have a fever, you have a menstruation or a lot of stress, this virus can reactivate. But every time it decreases in frequency and in severity. The treatment option, you guessed it, it's antiviral therapy. It decreases the severity of your symptoms and one or two days earlier you will get rid of those very, very annoying blisters. That's a win. And this brings us to the last virus we are going to cover today, the human papilloma virus. You see, it's the most common SCD there is, as almost all sexually active adults will be exposed to the virus at some point during their life. We are talking 14 million new infections each and every year in the US alone. That's mind-blowing. There are more than 40 different types of HPV virus that can spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact and therefore by sexual intercourse. Those can infect your genitals and your anus. About 90% of the HPV infections are resolved by your immune system and are totally cleared. However, in 10% of the cases, the virus persists and can cause warts and precancerous lesions, eventually even leading and causing actual cancer. And that's a problem. To prevent this, almost all countries have their own screening programs, which allows for early treatment and results in better outcomes. Now we discussed how to recognize these STDs, what their symptoms were, but now the most important part, how to prevent getting infected. First of all, use condoms. When used correctly, a condom can protect you from most STDs. Second, get tested. Getting tested is often the only way to actually know if you're infected with an STD at the first place. So always get tested, especially when you had unsafe sex and sex with a new partner. Thirdly, third, third, third on the list. If you test positive, get treated. Make sure to complete the whole treatment and don't have any unprotected sex during that treatment. Otherwise, you will be able to spread it to other partners. And of course, tell all your sexual partners you're infected, so they can get tested and treated too. And let's not forget maybe the best reason to prevent getting infected. It's by the use of vaccinations and vaccines. Currently, there are vaccines to prevent HPV and hepatitis B. And this brings us to the end of the video. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you're able now to recognize all these STDs. And more importantly, I hope you're able to prevent ever being infected. Now if you did, please leave a like to this video so YouTube knows this video is worth recommending to everybody who wants to learn anything on STDs. Secondly, if you have missed last week's video on curable STDs and how to prevent them, then check the video out in the description. In addition, I will be making a video on all the ins and outs of STD testing. So if you are interested in that one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye bye.